First Moloch, horrid king, besmeared with blood, of human sacrifice and parents' tears, though for the noise of drums and timbrels loud, their children's cries unheard that passed through fire to his grim idol. Such are the words of John Milton's Paradise Lost. In the Salambo by Gustave Flaubert, a historical novel about Carthage from the mid-19th century, Moloch is referred to as a god of the Carthaginians, who accepted the offerings of children as worship. for your abortion can be a really cathartic procedure. I like to always have a candle going on my altar. So there's always light within the darkness. Why is reproductive rights such a good fit for the satanic temple? We view Satan as a metaphorical construct, as the ultimate rebel against tyranny. We really feel that uh, the freedom of choice is, uh, is something that uh, that belongs uh, to, to our religious membership, and they should be able to, on religious liberty grounds, maintain it. They recently sent a letter to the FDA asking the church be allowed access to the abortion-inducing drug for its rituals. Expose the violence of abortion. Oh, yeah. That's what those posts I disagree that abortion is violent, and I believe that your actions are violent. What happens to an abo- uh, in, in an abortion wouldn't be done to a dog. So I think I'm somewhat of a hated human being. As recorded in the book of Leviticus, chapter 18, verse 21, the Lord Jesus Christ said, And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Moloch, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. In the spirit of being pro-life and valuing the life of the child that I have, which I'm sure most if not all of you here would agree with, I thought it was a great time to feature my collection of baby onesies and toddler tees that I have designed. The link for the merch store will be in the description. Thank you so much in advance to anyone who decides to support. And now let's get all the way into today's video. So the thing that originally inspired me to make this video was the clip of the woman who is building an altar or showing you how she used her altar uh, for an abortion. Um, that is a common practice in paganism to use an altar for things. So I am really curious to know more about why she did that and what her full intentions were. She seemed, she came off as more of like a mainstream person just dabbling into maybe Wicca or something like that. Um, but I did also see that there seems to be some type of parallel between that and the satanic temple saying that abortion is a religious uh, sacrament for them, I believe is the word that they use. So I wanted to give my feedback on those things. And as you're about to see soon, Elizabeth Warren seems very sympathetic to these types of people, even though she didn't say that. She comes across to be sympathetic to these types of uh, practices. So the woman with the altar said that it was a cathartic experience to use an altar for your abortion procedure. Uh, and as you can see here, the definition of cathartic is providing psychological relief through the open expression of strong emotions causing catharsis. For example, crying is a cathartic release. 
So that leads one to then ask, why is a cathartic release needed if an abortion is just so moral and, you know, acceptable and there's nothing wrong with it and it should be fully allowed? Why do you need a cathartic release if you are taking part in abortion? Could be because ending the life of your own child could be a very traumatic experience, similar to how you know, military veterans have PTSD after having to use their weapon on the enemy. I also really like to add the abortion pills themselves to the altar to really bless the pills that we're going to be taking into our bodies during this process. This leads me to ask who or what does she believe will be blessing these pills and why are they deserving of a blessing or why do they need a blessing, you know, like it's all just very convoluted and there's no expression here of, of where the blessing is coming from or like why this is being done. I would like to know those things from her perspective. But it's just very strange to me that there would be a blessing on something that is being put into your body in order to end the life of your child. Uh, if anything, I would think that blessing would come from the dark side. And place the container of which you plan to put the, the products of conception or the fetal remains within to catch that after you've passed it and save it for later when we, when we find a way to to bury or otherwise um, to where we find a way to properly dispose of the fetal remains in a way that gives reverence and respect and support to this to this sacred abortion experience. What this really makes me think of is the way that some cultures or people will um, give thanks basically to an animal that they killed in order to eat it. They will be reverent of the animal's life and show true gratitude and only take what they need and all that type of thing. Kind of makes me think of that kind of thing, except that a human child is not comparable to an animal because they are of much more value than that. I mentioned Moloch or Molech at the beginning, the god who was worshipped through child sacrifice because regardless of whether this woman with her abortion altar or these Satanists who use abortion as a religious sacrament are intentionally going out of their way to worship Moloch. I do believe that it is likely a real demonic entity that does take pleasure in their actions. Here are a couple additional places in the Bible where Moloch is mentioned in the books of Amos and Acts. And according to this article I found from the University of Oxford, Ancient Carthaginians really did sacrifice their children, in case anybody was doubting the validity of this. They say a collaborative paper by academics from institutions across the globe, including Oxford University, suggests that Carthaginian parents ritually sacrificed young children as an offering to the gods. The paper argues that well-meaning attempts to interpret the Tophet's ancient infant burial grounds simply as child cemeteries are misguided. And the practice of child sacrifice could even hold the key to why the civilization was founded in the first place. The research pulls together literary, epigraphical, archaeological, and historical evidence and confirms the Greek and Roman account of events that held sway until the 1970s when scholars began to argue that the theory was simply anti-Carthaginian propaganda. Sounds like woke culture today. And speaking of woke weirdness, here is Senator Elizabeth Warren getting pissed off that there are facilities that exist to help pregnant women to be able to feel capable of giving birth. In Massachusetts, right now, those crisis pregnancy centers that are there to fool people who are looking for pregnancy termination help outnumber true abortion clinics by three to one. We need to shut them down here in Massachusetts and we need to shut them down all around the country. You should not be able to torture a pregnant person like that. Oh, Elizabeth, only women can get pregnant, so it's pregnant woman, not pregnant person. And uh, it's interesting how you're totally cool with torturing the baby who would be terminated, and you're ready to effectively lie about these centers, uh, saying that they're there to trick people, which is absolutely insane. I've been to one, and it was great. 
And now lastly, here are some statements from the Satanic Temple members that I find to be quite nonsensical regarding why they advocate for abortion. And I am going to counter them with science. So here again is Lucian Greaves, the founder of the Satanic Temple. So we just have seven tenets, and they're rather humanistic and straightforward. They're the third tenet that states the body is inviolable, subject to one's own will alone, and that uh, we should defer to, to scientific fact the best we can. Those have really been the basis of our claims against uh, abortion restrictions. Okay, so according to Encyclopedia Britannica's summary of human egg fertilization... During the process, the chromosomes of the egg and sperm will merge to form a zygote, which will divide to form an embryo. And a zygote is capable of undergoing cell division to form a new individual. So correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I can tell, this is objectively stating that human egg fertilization is the beginning of the development of a new human being and really we are developing and changing our entire lives so there's nothing special about when they come out of the womb or when the heart starts beating they're a human being the whole time actually according to the exact words of this academic article they are an individual the whole time so as far as i can tell this makes the whole statement about your individual body being inviolable uh, pointless in this situation because the zygote, embryo, fetus, whatever stage they are at, they are always their own human individual. So I guess you could also take from this that the satanic temple is discriminatory when it comes to observing human rights. And I think that they're trying to hurt God ultimately. The meaning is a little bit lost for us. Uh, we're talking about the abstraction and fetishization of a fetal image as one that speaks and diminishes women's power and voice. Expose the violence of abortion. Oh, yeah. That's what those posts I disagree do. that abortion is violent, and I believe that your actions are violent. I really have to question here if this woman could be truly this ignorant or if she is purposefully spreading falsehoods in order to further her agenda. My name is Dr. Anthony Levitino. I'm a practicing obstetrician gynecologist and I've performed over 1,200 abortions. Today I'm going to describe a second trimester surgical abortion called dilatation and evacuation, or D&E. The d &E is performed between 13 and 24 weeks of pregnancy. Once the cervix has been stretched open, the suction tube is placed inside. A baby at 20 weeks gestation is as big as the length of my hand, from head to rump, not counting the legs. The suction machine is turned on, and pale yellow amniotic fluid surrounding the baby is suctioned out through the catheters. The baby's bones and skull are too strong to be torn apart by suction alone. This is a sofa clamp. A sofa clamp is made of stainless steel. It's about 13 inches long. The business end is about two and a half inches long and a half inch wide, and there are rows of sharp teeth. This is a grasping instrument. When it gets a hold of something, it does not let go. The abortionist uses this clamp to grasp an arm or a leg. Once he has a firm grip, the abortionist pulls hard in order to tear the limb from the baby's body. I disagree that abortion is violent. One by one, the rest of the limbs are removed, along with the intestines, the spine, and the heart and lungs. Usually the most difficult part of the procedure is extracting the baby's head, which is about the size of a large plum at 20 weeks. The head is grasped and crushed. The abortionist knows he has crushed the skull when a white substance comes out of the cervix. This was the baby's brains. I disagree that abortion is violent. The abortionist then removes skull pieces. The abortionist then collects the baby parts and reassembles them to make sure that there are two arms, two legs, and all the pieces. Once all the parts have been accounted for, the abortion is complete. For the woman, this procedure carries a significant risk of major complications, including perforation or laceration of the uterus or cervix with possible damage to the bowel, bladder, and other maternal organs. Infection and hemorrhage can also occur, which can even lead to death. Future pregnancies are also at greater risk for loss or premature delivery due to abortion-related trauma and injury to the cervix. 
you should not be able to torture a pregnant person like that. There needs to be some type of higher cognitive function. Wow, guys, we finally agree on something. <laughs> yeah, I'm just being sarcastic and silly, but in all of my research, I have seen that the reason why abortions are done is sometimes because the child is given a fatal diagnosis by the doctor who was doing the prenatal checkups, um, and the woman doesn't want to have to go through with a stillbirth or the child dying maybe within a week of giving birth and i can see some logic to that but i still feel that you know there is a lot of possibility of turning the situation around with neonatal medicine that we have available to us these days and even if the stillbirth did happen or the child did pass away within a week or so after birth um as traumatic as that would be, at least you would know that you gave it your all and you did everything you could and you allowed the child to live as long as they were meant to and you left it in God's hands. And I think that would be um, less traumatizing overall than the alternative. So those are my final words. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you again so much for being here today. Since you liked the video enough to make it all the way to the end, don't forget to click the thumbs up and share with somebody else who would also find it interesting. Leave your comments below and we'll all have a conversation. If you really enjoyed it, check out the description for several different ways that you can support. Have a wonderful night, afternoon, morning, evening, whatever time zone you're in.